Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, seen here on tour in the West Bank in June, has always been an outspoken critic of payday loan companies. He's called the industry morally wrong, likening it to the unethical practices of Old Testament usurers. Now he's gone a step further by announcing plans to take the industry on head to head. The Archbishop has said that the Church of England will provide facilities and support across the UK to credit unions, which offer far lower rates of interest, in an effort to, as he puts it, compete the payday loan companies out of existence. The Church of England is offering its locations to credit unions. It has thousands of locations across the UK. Credit unions don't have that sort of network across the UK already. There is actually a precedent of this. So in Ireland, for example, where credit union membership is much more widespread than it is in the UK, the Catholic Church has a very strong connection to credit unions and supports its members joining credit unions. So the rise of payday lending in the UK has been incredibly rapid and a lot of people have taken out loans which have then been rolled over, which are then unaffordable and have got them into a lot of trouble. By comparison, credit union membership is, is quite small. Are, will the payday lenders be worried? I'm not so sure. They say they take it seriously, but as a threat, it's, it's not too troublesome for them at the moment. The business of payday lending, which has grown from £900 million to £2.2 billion in the past three years, has been criticised for targeting the financially vulnerable. Annual interest rates on loans can reach above 5,000%. The industry is already under the spotlight with an investigation by the Competition Commission after the Office of Fair Trading raised concerns over its marketing strategies. Archbishop Welby wants to see credit unions take a more engaged approach to their local communities and provide what he calls a professional alternative to short-term lenders. But questions are being asked about whether the church should involve itself in such schemes at all. I think if the church isn't going to get involved in this, it probably has to ask itself what else it should be getting involved in. But it is quite interesting that we've moved back to an almost nine, early 19th century situation where you have a church trying to set up or develop a mutual friendly style of society at the same time while you have banks that are struggling to lend, especially to poor people, and a welfare system that is fraying. Justin Welby got the right line in his comments to the Wonga chief executive in that he saw him as a competitor rather than somebody to talk down to. And I think if he continues with that, that will demonstrate a marked and important shift in how the church interacts with ethical issues, especially around the welfare state. The church may no longer have as many people on the pews as it once did, but it has a balance sheet and it has a lot of space. And as Larkin wrote in Church Going, there's a great demand to go to that space, even if there isn't a great demand to pray on it. So I think if well, we can use those assets that the church has in a pragmatic, almost business-like way, I think it'll actually have a bit more effect than perhaps his predecessor who was preaching, again, often literally to the converted.